My name is Maija Paavalainen. I come from Helsinki University and Helsinki University Library. And I work with the Helsinki Center of Digital Humanities, HELDIG, and with the researchers there. I started my studies in the early 2000s in Helsinki University with my major in philosophy. And, uh, but while my um, conducting my studies, I, I also worked in the library and in the National Library Old Books collection. So, so I got fascinated by the unique materials they had in, in the Finnish National Library. And after, or as a part of my MA, I, I also completed a library degree. I started working in, in libraries in two, 2008 and always with students. I was teaching students to find sources for their work. And I was responsible for the humanities department, like um, it's the biggest department in, in Helsinki University uh, with more than uh, three, yeah, three to six hundred students coming to my courses each year. Well, when the di digital humanities developments in, in Helsinki started appearing and people were giving the first seminars and, and inviting visiting speakers, to speak about digital humanities, I, I spotted that this might be my, um, should be something I should um, know about because I was responsible for the, for the sources for humanities students and then I started following up the developments. DARIA is a research infrastructure, there's no doubt that we, our top priority is researchers. But in order to have good researchers in digital humanities, somebody needs to uh, train them. So what is, um, what is your, can you give us a little bit of an overview of the Finnish DH training and education landscape? Uh, Finland has um, eight universities and almost every university has a program or a minor program that is somehow um, connected to the, that's called digital culture or uh, information studies or these type of things, information technology related stuff. But the only university that's, that actually has a DH program, digital humanities program, uh, and pro program on MA level, and then then a minor subject study block is Helsinki University. And are there other options for uh, students more informally, no, so not necessarily in the university settings, but um, options to to um, attend workshops or summer schools or um, in digital humanities in Finland? There is one course we are particularly proud, proud of. In Helsinki University, we have been organizing this intensive week in May, which is uh, at the end of the academic year. And the purpose is that the students either have completed the digital humanities minor study block or then, or then they come from other universities to, to work in groups in mini research projects with um, with group leaders that are researchers and with, with data that comes from the cultural heritage organizations. And the results of these intensive works, uh, work weeks have been very encouraging. They have some, they've even continued up to publications and further projects. Can you give me an example of the, of the type of pro types of projects that, that um, people worked on in these, in these workshops? Uh, for example, newspaper data is, um, is, uh, has been available for, for some time now. And one in interesting project working with newspaper data was um, finding uh, fiction or literature in newspapers, which is kind of a neglected form of publishing. But at, at one time it was kind of common to publish poems and even short, short stories in, in newspapers. And, and the idea of this group was to look if um, if this kind of marginalized literature has some some different themes, different topics than the than the more canonized one. And I think this is a very interesting project. And was it difficult to organize an event of of um, this kind because you had to involve um, cultural heritage institutions, but also researchers, and then to find the students. And how did, um, on the organizational level, how did it work out? Uh, the organization of the Helsinki Digital Humanities Hackathon is getting better every year. Um, 
the the main point there is that also um, concerning the groups, it's um, multidisciplinary in the sense that we try to bring together humanities people and then computer science people. So we're working with Aalto University, the Technical University, and our own Helsinki University Computer Science Department to to get the uh, really the coders there and get the humanities people there. Then the negotiations with cu cultural heritage organizations have gone on for months before. And then we really emphasize the group din dynamics there so that the students would get to know each other a little bit before the intensive week so that they can actually start working during the week and, and they would get real results. So yes, it's, it's, um, yeah, it's a machine. <laughs> <laughs> and, and do you think that um, it's, it's difficult for um, people who, who come from different disciplines to, to find a common language. It's definitely an issue to, to make the cultures meet in this kind of multidisciplinary efforts. Mm, the one thing is to talk about it, to talk about openly about the possible communication difficulties and the time you need to, to actually to formulate the the questions and, and to formulate the methods in a way that the others understand. So just bringing up this issue helps and then taking some time to, to get to know the people so that they can build a trust and then start working. And a good result for this type of week would be just uh, kind of that the cultures are getting closer together and that people have the experience of communicating. What do you think are the, the some of the specific skills that young students that students or young researchers need to master in order to become DHers? Uh, I would answer to the question of skills, I would answer uh, firstly interpersonal skills because digital humanities uh, differs from the traditional humanities research in from in that sense that it's done in groups and people need to learn to communicate with each other, uh, yeah, where whatever discipline they come from. Why, is, why do you think it's important to also involve um, cultural heritage institutions in, in, in these type of educational initiatives? In my opinion, cultural heritage institutions are crucial in DH because they actually provide the research data that is already there, that is available for the for the researchers. So in my opinion, the digital collections of heritage organizations um, are openly av available da data sets, depending of course how they are put out. So depending if they really can be downloaded and work it on, worked on with the, with the digital methods at hand and they are not behind an interface or or restricted by copyright. What do you see um, as the role of a research infrastructure in um, helping scholars and future scholars develop their skills? Uh, the role of research infrastructure, um, a digital research infrastructure is of course about sharing uh, tools and best practices. But what I see as most valuable is making um, making it possible for people to spend time face to face and actually learn learn in real contact. And this would be possible through some um, course periods, uh, summer schools, things like this, that the best practices are best delivered in, in working together. Yeah. I attended uh, Daria Winter School in Prague in, in the October 2016 and it was under the title of Open Data Citation in Humanities and Social Sciences. And since I work with cultural heritage, heritage institutions and, and open data, open cultural data, I was immediately fascinated by the, by the program and, and by, the, um, by the title. And it had very good speakers, university people from, from all over Central Europe, and, and in the beautiful setting of Prague and Charles University, it was really an experience. What do you think that Daria specifically should do or should do better uh, in order to help scholars develop new skills? During 2016, Finland was taking part in a survey uh, conducted together in, on a European level in Daria. And uh, in this survey, uh, the researchers, humanities researchers, was, were asked about their digital practices and uh, in which part of the research life cycle they actually use digital methods and tools. And the results from Finland also are in parallel with the other European results that, that most of the people who answered 
uh, use the digital methods in the, um, in the first stages, so in the information searching part, and then again on the publication part uh, at the last stages of the, of the research life cycle. So what is needed or what is uh, missing um, in a large part of the researchers is the, the digital tools in the, in the actually the core parts of the research process. So really organizing the data, annotating the data, enriching the data, whatever they are working on. And these types of digital tools are not so easily available as, as um, the more established publication and information searching tools are. So our researchers also answered in the, in the open-ended questions that they would need uh, help for curation to, to choose the, the best tools for each purpose and then, then that they would also need, um, need uh, recommendations of people to work with, so they would need help with networking and the finding the right people to, for example, for example, for the most more computational or for the more digital oriented tasks in their research. Daria could help researchers network for bring bring them to meet face to face. When in a meeting, uh, you can always discuss your own projects, but then someone always knows a colleague in their country who is working on something similar, and this the um, connections are not restricted on the people who are present, but they are also, also going further from there. I think um, a, a very important influence in the Finnish scenery has been the Finnish Open Glam um, organization, o organizing courses and, and giving the institutions um, mutual support for opening the data and, and being more positive tovar, towards giving the digital collections out in sen, instead of uh, trying to sell them or keep them closed. I work with, um, with the open cultural open data people um, in university library by organizing a course for humanities students in our digital humanities program where the heritage institutions come and present their data sets for students. So this is one way of bringing the open cultural data to to also to students and researchers. I, I always felt that um, in, in my experience dealing with um, cultural heritage institutions that the question of open data, open science, and it's never really um, a technical question, it's a social question. And, it's, it's, it, and sometimes it's very hard to, you know, sometimes people tend to be very protective of their uh, materials and there's, there's, you know, fear involved that somehow giving things out for free um, will depreciate the value of the institution. Um, Finland is, is quite advanced in, in terms of um, open data I th from what I know, but did you, did you also encounter some difficulties or was everybody really um, right from the start ready to, to share um, in various GLAM institutions that you worked with? Uh, the Finnish organizational culture is um, is a little bit shy or, or, or is a little bit like uh, wary of doing anything wrong. So the copyright legislation is taken very seriously and also also many people in institutions are not not ready to make experiments on open data. But then the international examples of opening uh, cultural heritage da data are so compelling that that um, there is a handful of institutions who are really, really also in Finland, who are really looking into, into making bigger and bigger openings and they are actually benefiting from it, like already in a great way. And that also shows why, why it is important to build these international networks um, like Daria, uh, because we, we, by looking at best practice examples, we can um, kind of move things, um, push them in a different direction in our own countries. Um, and, and I think the, the examples that you gave um, are a testimony to that. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk with us.